Hey everyone, welcome to the show today. I have a special guest for you, someone that I have tracked on social media. She goes by the Instagram handle of Investing for Financial Freedom. So you know we had to get her on the channel. Let's welcome Elise to the show. How are you doing, Elise? Hi, I'm so good. Thank you for having me. I'm oh, so excited. This is going to be fun. I, you, you win for uh, the best backdrop of any guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, uh, I've got to. There's a house full of people for Thanksgiving. So uh, this, is, this is what it is, but it's a good one. Oh, it's absolutely good. And thank you for taking time during a busy week to do an interview. This is, this is going to be fun. Why, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience, who you are, what you do, uh, and we'll go from there. Yes. Yeah, so um, my name's Elise. I um, am 32 years old. I am an out-of-state investor. My husband and I invest out of state. Um, we're fairly new. We've been investing a little under three years. Um, and during that time, we've acquired six properties, um, seven doors, because one of those is a duplex. And um, like I said, we do invest out of state because we live in California. So we have to go where the numbers make sense for us. That's awesome. And just again, because of, uh, I don't know, the world works in mysterious ways. It looks like your, your husband and your story matches Olivia and I's at least numerically, right? You started roughly around 30. Um, yep. You're at about seven or eight doors. Again, we had one duplex also. Uh, the only wrinkle is you're out of state and we chose to go out of area because I think we both live in expensive parts of California. Um, yeah. so, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. Why, why out of state and you know, um, yeah, I guess this is start with why out of state first. Yes. Yeah, so, um, a couple reasons. One is the entry point is, is a lot cheaper, right? Mm. So we're looking for, um, entry points where we can start right away because time is money. So instead of having more time where we had to save for that larger down payment, mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first reason is entry point. The second is those rent to value ratios that you see, um, you know, in the Southeast and Midwest are just beautiful they're just they're just beautiful so um you know it was worth it learning learning uh, about those areas and, and trying to have our money make money very very cool so okay so you're, you're i don't know 29 or 30 just doing math and yeah. you, you look at california you're like nope let's go out of state you know where'd you land first yeah, we actually um, started in Indianapolis, our first okay. house in Indiana. And if I could backtrack for one second, go for it. Go for familiar it. with Big Bear Lake, we actually bought um, a vacation house 50 50 with our in laws, uh, maybe around 27 years old. Um, and I think that was like the slowest transition of all time, where we were looking at um, this vacation cabin that we were renting out part time and then enjoying, um, you know, for ourselves part time. But that's when we started looking at like, wow, we really need to get a full-time income property. And it took us about two years to just really um, solidify that thought. And then, um, and then only a few months, honestly, after we said, okay, we're going to buy an out-of-state property. Um, and, then, and then we pulled the trigger. So um, we started looking at Indianapolis because of um, cash flow. But we were also kind of aware that it was a growth, a growing market, so that there was probably going to be appreciation also. So it was a twofer. Hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's why we chose that area. So I always like talking about the first deal, but before I do that, um, don't beat yourself up too hard. I know lots of people who spend a far more than two years on your transition, as you called it, yeah, uh, and yeah. actually never get started. So, um, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up too hard. Uh, but okay, let's talk about that first house in Indianapolis. What, what was it? How'd you find it? Just MLS networking, you know, all the, all the good details at least. Yes. Yeah, so, um, in late 20. 16 we joined a real estate network um and they focused a lot of their um energy on out-of-state properties mm -hmm. uh, they had referrals for us so um once we were looking at all of the different areas and i kind of zeroed in on indianapolis and i talked with my husband and i said this is where i want our first property to be um literally within a few months we said i want we want to buy a property in like three months mm -hmm. so um then it happened kind of quickly. We set our flight. That's, you know, that actionable step. It makes a big difference. We set our flight and we went to meet the agent, the property management company, and then to go look at properties. Um, now I would say, we, you know, we don't go and look at properties before we buy. We've been doing this a little while. And in fact, some of the properties we hadn't seen at all before we bought. But um, so at that point, our very first house, we absolutely flew out, met everyone, went and checked the properties, walked them by foot. And um yeah, we found one. It was kind of an interesting first deal. 
Um, it's a three bedroom, two bath. Um, it was, it's kind of small, like 1200 square feet. It's in, um, a little, um, like HOA, uh, neighborhood, which in California, we would never dream of, um, you know, getting something with an HOA, but in California, the HOAs are like 250 to 500 bucks. And in Indiana, it was like $20. Um, so I was fine with that. Yeah, I guess so little um splash pads for the kids a community pool so i just thought you know wow. this is desirable rental it's going to attract great tenants mm-hmm. uh, you know hopefully this will this will make our lives easier getting a good good first rental so um yeah we we uh, decided to make an offer and we told them you essentially have three hours to accept this um because we're heading back to california so kind of um raisin for our first (laughs) offer ever um but she was an agent she was a the agent and the owner so she kind of knew um the deal and she accepted so yeah it went really well very very cool so um so how many days did you spend in in Indianapolis before you made your first offer was was it one trip or multiple uh and then oh yeah go ahead I I really don't think we were there for that long I think it was like a four day trip. Like <laughs> we didn't, we just really wanted to just quickly find the houses, make offer. It was like a four day trip in total. Okay. Um, but we had to look at, um, you know, quite a few properties before we made our offer. And then by the time we made our offer, it was like, Hey, can you accept really quick? Because we're, we're we, we got a plane <laughs> we, to catch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's fun. So you probably saw, I'm going to guess 20 properties, maybe 25 during a Four day trip really got a sense for Indianapolis, the areas where you wanted to be. Is that kind of what what the four days were like? Yeah. So our agent caters to out of state investors. He Ah. actually had a big list ready to go for him. And he was like, You're not going to like this one. You're not going to like this one. Um, But he, just for my own learning lessons, he took us um, and basically I was like, okay, which ones should we go see? (laughs) So I kind of, I was going for real, um, you know, uh, bargains, let's say. Yeah. And he's like, you're not like the area. And you know, it's going to bite you later when you have evictions and, you know, Mm. tenant problems and all of that. Um, so we cut our list down significantly. I think we probably saw 15, 20 total. Well, that's, that's really awesome. I mean, did you luck out finding an agent that caters to out of state investors because of your network that you, you joined? Is that, yeah. That's That's exactly right. And I think referrals are key. So wherever you go, um, referrals are great. And you can even see what, you know, client testimonies are. Um, It's important because if I would say that we're a special breed, investors Mm -hmm. are because, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not easy for the agents when we're looking for certain numbers because good deals are hard to come by and then they get snatched very quickly. And Mm -hmm. if you're telling you know, I want a house X amount b- below market value. They're like, great. So does everyone else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's like, you're special. Thanks. Yeah, so, yeah. um, That's yeah, cool. yeah. Very cool. So I'm just curious if you remember, do you remember the numbers on that first deal roughly? Yeah. Um, so our first, this is our very first deal. So, um, we ended up buying it for 98.5. Wow. Um, it's worth 125 today. All right. Yeah. That's in Indiana. It's, it's decent growth. So we, yeah. it was a, t- um, it was supposed to be zero, um, uh, renovations, but uh-huh. it actually had, the owner was a cigarette smoker. Uh-huh. Um, we were just thinking it was going to be the ozone machine. Like it had granite countertops, everything was beautiful, the carpet, everything, the paint. Um, so we just thought we could do an ozone machine. So, um, that didn't work out. Hmm. Uh, it still smelled rank like cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ended up doing 2,500 in reno for, um, flooring and new paint. So, yeah. um, yeah, Carp- carpet <laughs> not then bad, that, but yeah. we thought it was zero and, and that smoke still, that smoke still stays. All right. So you're into the property 101, right? 98.5 plus 2,500. Yep. Um, and it rented yeah. for, and, and how long did it take to rent and what, what kind of rent did you get? Yeah. So it, the rent was 1050. It's now 1075. So it's basically a one percenter yeah. would have been without that small reno, um, rent to value ratio. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't take long. Well, I would say they were showing the property for a week or two and we, and that's when they were like, no, the feedback is it <laughs> still smells like smoke. Yeah. So then a very quick turnaround, our property management co- got someone in there to quickly um, paint, do the flooring. And then within a week, like we had a signed contract. And they very cool. Right and but have you had the same tenants for two years or? The whole time. Yeah. Since ah. January 
of 2017. Yep. So that's that, that beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 People don't, that's, I've seen that in my portfolio as well is, is when you get somebody into a house that's of quality like this one, my right. average tenure is north of five years in a house. Yes. So honestly, such a huge expense is those vacancies and turnovers, right? To the costs to make ready. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll sometimes structure deals when we're looking at our properties and it's time to release. Of course, we look at, you know, what's the market, mm. market rental rates, but sometimes we'll structure it. where like, if you sign a two-year contract, we won't raise your rent. Yeah. Um, so because that. it makes yeah. sense to us. So, um, and we'll structure it differently. Like, okay, it'll be 25 bucks. If you sign a one year, it'll be this, if you sign two years. So we, you know, we try to make it appetizing for them because, because at the end of the day, when you do the math, that 25 bucks a month versus maybe a month of vacancy or whatever. Um, oh, yeah. 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 You're, 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 you're catching on to settle things very quickly because it is absolutely uh, the turnover costs or uh, yeah. make ready costs that, you know, I've had, I've had houses go for years and then one, one turnover and boom, there goes two years of cash flow. Right. Right. So, uh, so if they're willing to live with the paint and all that themselves and they've been used to, I'm like, fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's awesome congrats on the first deal that's always fun um Thanks. near the one percent rule D a twofer as you say got cash flow plus appreciation why the heck yeah. would you leave indianapolis i mean why would you go to another state yeah i mean then you start to look at i want more cash flow <laughs> um, <laughs> so um in indy like um you can really make your money in certain areas that um I wouldn't say depressed, but they're, they're not the same as the area we went to because by the time we were ready to buy again, um, at this time we were doing 20% down conventional loans, right? Yep. So the time we were looking for another 20% down, we were seeing that growth. Like our, our, um, house had already appreciated and we were not getting the numbers we wanted. So, mm -hmm. um, we went back to looking at different areas, um, and we landed on like a Kentucky, Tennessee border okay. um, area. And, and that's where we went from there. And the, and the cash flow was a little higher. So that's why we. Okay. So, so you, you land one. You, again, you're, I'm guessing, are you in the same network maybe? Are you getting leveraged that way? Or do you have to build a yeah. whole network? Ah, okay. Yeah. These, this, all of that network, um, we basically searched and found research areas and then referrals um, to Got the agent property managers. So it makes it, it makes it easy. Yeah. All right. So you're, so do you want to say what network you're a part of? Give them a plug or you don't yeah, use them anymore? Yeah. So actually I think most people think like Luria, this, this, the original network that we were a part of, it was called Marshall Reddick. Okay. It's actually more of like a turnkey rental um, thing, but, but we weren't using it that way. Like ah. they have a lot of things where they want you to buy it. And the way it get, um, they get their money is they take a cut from the agent and then they get a, a bit from the property management company. Oh, um, we weren't wanting to buy their turnkeys because the, the numbers weren't there. Right. Um, to be frank. And they're awesome. And they have guides and tell you about a whole bunch of different areas and um, have properties for sale. So I don't want to, you know, discredit yeah. them, discount them in any way. Um, it's just, we use them, but we use them a bit differently. We use their agents and their, and their management companies um, and then found our own properties. And then how did, <laughs> how did you stumble across them? Just again, just web searches and all of that, or somebody referred yes. you to them or? Actually, um, so my dad is um, big on financial literacy. Um, oh. He was taught from a young age to do like stock market with him and how to invest. Um, and then recently, um, just a few years before I started investing, he joined the Marshall Reddick Network and he uh. purchases um, and he has a him and my mom um, have several in Arizona. Oh, okay. So they use the Marshall Reddick um, network. And then, um, you know, we're telling me how wonderful it was and where I should invest and have my money. Got it. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You've just brought up a question. I've never had, I've never had the pleasure of asking before. So this is going to be fun. Oh, uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> no, no, no. It's well, hopefully it'll be good. Uh, let's give okay. a plug. Let's give a plug to dad and mom. Um, yeah. How was it growing up in an environment that sounds like money and investing was talked about? Like when you were a yes. teenager, is that, yes. that doesn't happen a lot. What, what was that like? You know what? I give kudos to my parents. Um, so, so really, truly, they did such a good job um, trying to make me financially literate by the time I entered adulthood. Hmm. Um, so I had mutual funds and we would watch and, you know, I would talk and learn about compounding interest and, um, you know, how your money doubles maybe every eight years. And that's why it's so important to start so early because that last doubling, right? Yeah. So these are the things that I learned growing up. Wow. Um, 
and they weren't real estate investors early on. My dad um, did some, some stock picking, but um, I, I really learned about financial literacy and my parents um, are pretty frugal. They don't um, even, you know, make a huge, you know, exorbitant amount of money, but it's what you have at the end of the day, right? And what you do mm -hmm. with that, because I see a lot of people making a lot of money um, <laughs> and it's gone or they're in debt. So, oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I really think he gave um, me an advantage and my, and my siblings an advantage. That's that. Oh, kudos to mom and dad. Uh, yeah. you, you did something special. Uh, congratulations. Or thank you, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Thank you and congrats, <laughs> whatever the right answer is. Uh, both, I, both. Yeah, I, so it sounds like they were kind of leading you on. It wasn't about income. It was about what you do with what you have left over. So live frugally, AKA save. And then yes. when you save, you invest. And then, oh, by the invest. way, repeat, right? That's that whole earn, exactly. save, invest, repeat. So uh, how and, did that come And off? the other part of that too is that my dad, a big um, fan of um, the Millionaire Next Door. I don't know. If oh yeah, that. yeah, of course. Oh, of okay. course. Yeah, read so the book if you have it, it. Oh yeah, read it. Read it. Um, honestly, so there's a bit of in there about children and how million what millionaires do with their children. Oh, for sure. Serves them. So um, I won't take too much of your time, but basically, um, he taught me what's what's theirs is theirs, and what's mine is mine, and I will work for it. And I learned very awesome. early. On yeah, so it's so it's different. I, I definitely learned a responsibility. Um, I mean, with things like cars, and even I mean, I moved out at eighteen and paid for my own college. Um, cool. And made it. Yeah, yeah. I worked at Denny's night shift, seven a.m. to to seven p.m. to three a.m. and then I would go to school all day. But, anyways, I learned to work hard. <laughs> there you go. Now, well, again, give a plug to Millionaire Next Door, Tom Stanley, if memory serves. Stanley definitely might have Tom's. Anyways, uh, what I remember for that book was Doctor North and Doctor South right? Yes. Basically yes. In, income's not the thing, right? Both of these doctors in the book were making 400 grand a year and this was in the 80s. So I don't know what that is, a million bucks today. One of them was happy and one of them was miserable, right? If you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about, buy the book. It's cheap. Yep. Um, millionaire get Next Door. Used. Oh yeah, get it used. Yeah. Don't, I've read yeah. it a dozen times, if not more. Uh, just, just it's it's awesome so all right so uh mom and dad make the introduction mom and dad give you financial education financial literacy literacy uh you hustle right work at night uh pay for your own college god so much respect elise um thank you thank i you. guess uh let's talk about this one again a question i don't normally ask how it sounds like your husband uh is on board with this and you know sometimes you yeah. find your partner and they're different than you right does he come with the same literacy, treat money the same way, same vision, or did you have to train him? Yeah. So, um, I definitely did bring both stock investing originally, and then later on, um, real estate investing to his table. Um, but we are very much in, in many senses of the word, the same person. So mm. he brings the same enthusiasm, vigor towards, um, working towards financial freedom for us. Um, it's, it's really about like shaving off so many years of working, mm -hmm. um, having to work right so if we yeah. choose to work um that's great but we we envision ourselves retiring or being able to retire at 45 um, oh. so 20 years off that yeah so so we're working towards it i mean and that wouldn't be possible i'm a nursing supervisor he's um an operations manager um we would very much have to work until 65 um mm -hmm. have we're not doing and taking the steps that we are now. So, um, yeah. And I would say we complement each other. It's, it's really nice. Um, you know, he takes a lot of the financial and really digs deep into the numbers and I'll do the basic, like, Oh, the after repair value is this, the rentals are this, you know, and then he'll come back with a spreadsheet. Okay. After CapEx and this, this is, this is what we're looking at. Um, awesome. and taxes. He's, he's great with, with the taxes and the deductions and, creating um depreciation schedules for for our roofs and whatever so he's he, he definitely compliments yeah. that's awesome and it's it, and again just so you know that's that that's not as common as one would like i think we both got lucky we have partners <coughs> yeah that uh compliment us and want us the same thing so again uh what you want to do by 45 is absolutely possible we started right around the same age and uh we nailed it right we got uh, i was 45 and like four months when, when I left and, and Olivia left awesome. earlier. Yeah. So it is possible. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, you have something out there and you say, he I was, did it. 
I was stalking you a bit, obviously, but um, like we're we're pretty similar. Like I used to run cross country and track. I know you used to. Oh, run yeah. track. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I did one team sport. You were talking about how you didn't do team sports. I did soccer, uh, uh, but but uh, I did enjoy, uh, enjoy those individual wins in track and cross yeah. country. <laughs> I, I'm going to own this myself. I'm going to be me, Are they good or yeah. bad. Yeah, it's, it's yeah exactly, exactly. All right, so let's go back to real estate. Sorry, I digressed when we talked about financial literacy, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't talk yeah. about that enough. M parents, do your kids a favor. Figure out a way to talk about it. Worst case, give a millionaire next door as a Christmas gift. Um, yeah. So you're in a, you're in multiple states now. Uh, you started in Indianapolis. You did something on the Kentucky Tennessee border. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just talk. So you, you as you sit today, you're in how many different states? Four. We're right. in four states. Yeah. Uh, I I hear that, and I'll let you know, Elise. I get nervous. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. ooh, no economies yeah. of scale. You spread yourself too thin. Your your just logic says you're bound to have a dud either a dud of yeah, a property yeah. or a dud of a team, both. Suck. Yeah. 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 So ha have you been lucky so far and you've been coming up roses or have you had uh, an ouch along the way? I mean, it's been pretty good. Okay. Um, I, we recently switched our property management company, company in Indiana. Um, they weren't bad. It's just, um, you know, we wanted someone that was more responsive and mm -hmm. um, that would take a look at any costs that come up and wouldn't just hire Joe Blow for way more than they should be hiring, you know, okay. someone more sensitive to price. Um, but honestly, it's been pretty good. And uh -huh. I really, we're still, knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> it's been like, it's been pretty good. Um, I, I will say it's, it's tricky with out of state investing. If I can go on like a tiny tangent, you Please. really know the area. Mm -hmm. um, like coming from California, there's things I was naive about. So when you go, like we invest, um, you know, in the Midwest and Southeast, when you go to different areas, like there's seasons, right? For um, like the best rental rates that you can get and the highest amount of people that are looking for properties. And I'm like, what? Like in California, first of all, like we don't really get seasons, but um, yeah. there's always a, a need There's a, for, for properties. Um, there's a shortage. So that's not something I experienced. And then um, climate, climate. Mm causes a lot of different issues and costs that you need to account for, right? So like, I think I spoke to you um, and said that my parents invest in Arizona. Well, one of their costs is they have to do scorpion sprays. Like that's real life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't be on my spreadsheet. <laughs> scorpion oh, spray. So that needs to, right. And then like, of course, like it's hotter there. So maybe your AC unit, right? You're, you're replacing sooner. So like you have to think about these things. Like, so in our, we have a duplex in Florida because of the climate. Um, they get subterranean termites, right? Uh, Things like other, other places get like damp wood or dry wood termites, but they get subterranean termites. So you have to have service for that. Um, I mean, if then there's sometimes hurricanes up north, there's um, sinkholes or like Kansas, Oklahoma get tornadoes. Like I'm not trying to scare people, but honestly, like you have to know like what, what happens in your area? What kind of insurance do you need to get? Is it covered? What kind of costs do you need to have and include? So it's just, you, you really do need to know your area. Um, yeah. it's, you can just go invest somewhere because they have great ratios. Like you have to know the neighborhood and then do they have a good property manager? Because I don't care where you go and what the numbers look like. Yeah. You have to have a good property manager in place. No, number one, a, a, a great property manager can make a bad property semi-perform a horrible property manager can just destroy a great property. Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah. definitely about the PM. So I'm curious on this. I mean, how much time are you, I don't know, coordinating, talking to, reviewing? Because you have four different teams. Yeah, right? yeah. And all the reports are different. Um, you know, approval rates may be different. I mean, how is that juggling four different PMs? Um, so I will say like, I feel like there's a, a big myth about, um, you know, we get called all the time. I think you mm -hmm. do your front, you make your money on the buy, but you also kind of set up your, set yourself up for how much work you're going to have as a landlord, okay. um, with your buy. So, um, we've typically chosen good buys and good buys, good purchases. It sounds <laughs> like 
um, good purchases um, to kind of save ourselves. And we don't get a lot of calls. Um, maybe we get calls like if there's a small, like we had to replace a water heater, right? Yeah. Uh, or it's time to release. What do you want the rates to be? This is what the market is. And we really don't get too much, um, too many calls. And then that also speaks to um, most recently we've done rehabs. So the properties are in really good working order. Um, we're, okay. we're doing burrs. So, um, you know, okay. the, the properties are good to go. Yeah, yeah. So you're, so what, I don't know, four hours a month maybe talking with the, or talking, communicating with the PMs yeah, kind of um, collectively? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That, or a week. Yeah, I, yeah, not much more than that. Yeah, okay. And again, that's, and again, we're talking um, six houses and a duplex. Um, six properties total. So five oh, or single five family. Okay. Yeah, five or single family, and then one's a duplex. Single is, family is pretty much our bread and butter. Yeah, and the duplex, is it two houses, one lot, or is it they're connected? They're connected. Yeah, so, side by duplex. What, uh, have you noticed any difference? Uh, would you do a duplex again, or are you like, nope, we're going to go back to houses? The duplex has been nice. Okay. Um, that was another one where we pushed the envelope with, hey, this is when, um, this is how long you have to accept this offer. Yep. Um, it's all cash offer. Um, and they were trying to do, I remember they had the listing that, you know, we're accepting all offers until Sunday. And we basically said, no, you have until Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, cause we did, that's crazy, but we didn't want people to go and view the property over the weekend and have a bidding war. Yeah. Um, so I literally remember they changed the MLS listing and they said, seller changed their mind. You have until Friday. Um, and so we pushed them and we ended up getting it. Um, that duplex is awesome. We bought it for, I mean, it's good. We bought it for 145. One side rents for 950. The other side, um, he was grandfathered in. He rents for 875, and he's a great tenant. Okay. Um, and we have to redo his his unit needed some work, and we were like, you know what, you can stay here. <laughs> stay there. <laughs> You're good. You're good. And, so, in um, what state's that in? Sorry. That one's in Florida. Oh, nice. Okay. That duplex. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now, as you sit here, right, with in four different states, if you had to wave a magic wand, would you be in one city? Or or one state thinking about it yeah, all over so again? The, yeah, the last three properties we've actually purchased in Tennessee. Okay. So really like Tennessee and actually we plan on moving there in three years. Ah. So, um, so that's why we're kind of concentrating our efforts there. Um, yeah. Like Nashville or? There, it's a suburb right outside Nashville. Okay. Um, it's called Clarksville. Okay. Very, yeah. very cool. And I mean, what I guess is it's, it's, Go it's ahead. got like 130,000 people. I mean, it's not a small, oh, yeah. yeah, it's not small. Okay. Yeah. And what, uh, what attracted you to Tennessee? And it sounds like it attracted you so much. You're mo potentially moving there. What, what is it about Tennessee? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think people need to understand again, when you look at out of state, like what kind of policies and what kind of like taxation, um, you know, is in place. So people really need to look when they go to look at a state, like what are the city, city, county, and state um, taxes like? Um, Tennessee is, um, the I think it's like the fifth lowest overall tax oh, state. Wow. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> if, if, if you ask me, I'm not big on um, the government taking so much of our money that we yeah. work for. I think it's like a third you know, that they take. So every third day you're working for free. Oh, um, ouch, don't say that, so, but it's so true. <laughs> I know. So, and I work for the government. I should not be saying that. So um, I work for a health department as a nurse. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I like, I, I like Tennessee a lot. Um, and then that particular area has just a lot of, um, there's a lot of economy. There's a lot of different job diversification, different types of um, companies. And then also there's a military base, Fort oh. Campbell second largest um military base so and they treat your your properties with respect and it's just guaranteed income that they get yeah. from the army i feel like um now your listeners are going to go to this area i'm going to be in competition <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm like selling um clarkville <laughs> to my own detriment <laughs> you'll be fine you'll be fine oh that's I'm awesome just that's i know i know everyone. yep exactly abundance mentality that's that's absolutely right so let's, let's talk about the future so a couple things i've learned you're in California today, four states, yeah. potentially moving to Tennessee with, with your husband yeah. in three years. Target goal of 45, you're currently 32. These are all things I think you've said earlier. So, yeah. what, so what do you see in your future between now and 45, right? So there's a move? Yep. Kids, perhaps? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so we have one kid. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. 
Three more. Yes, yes. We have a little, uh, almost two-year-old. Oh, congrats. We did, I didn't know that. All right. So you're juggling all this with a growing family and a career. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So where, so where does it go from here? Um, do you have a, a target cash flow number that makes 45 doable, like five grand a month net or a unit count or, or where do you go from here? Cause we're about to roll into a new decade, which is going to be a great decade for you. Yeah. I mean, we've got goals. We, uh, we're looking at a number, right? It's not a number of units. Like you said, it's a, it's a number, uh, you know, that we're looking at for income to come in every yep. month. Um, I, the reason that I'm waiting three years is because I get a pension with my ah. current work. So um, I don't get to collect until I'm like 50, but uh, it's not worth me leaving it on the table, honestly, because sure. um, there's some medical and, and some financial. Um, I just can't leave that. Yeah. Um, so, so when we hit that in three years, we'll leave. Um, and yeah, there is a number. I, I kind of am okay living a more minimal lifestyle. Sure. Um, my husband doesn't want to cap it. So we, I think it was somewhere like around 9,000 a month we wanted okay. to have with, with our house paid for. And um, that's sure. the other thing is when we sell our house in California um, and move to Tennessee, um, you know, the, the, the cost of houses is just like minimal. I mean, yeah. com in comparison. So um, yeah, we're going to free up our nest egg. Yeah, I think, well, I think there's going to be a lot. Of, I think California, again, I've lived here my entire life. So realize that you're talking to a Californian here. We, we are on a negative trend statewide, right? Taxes, uh, the middle class is just being crushed. Uh, it's, 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 it's not good. Uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of people that go, you know what, I can go live somewhere else like Tennessee, uh, live, yeah. have my house free and clear with money left yeah. over. Right. And, um, you know, the quality of life will be, uh, exponentially better. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's really strong. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, tell us about your Instagram handle. I, I, I love it. Investing for financial freedom. Um, yeah. tell us about that. So so it, it does say financial freedom, but really, truly that financial freedom for me just equates to time freedom. Num that's the number one most yes. important thing for me is time freedom um, and my family. I mean, you'll see, we even include her, um, you know, maybe we are taking a little bit of time now to invest for our future, but she's involved. Like we were going um, and looking at houses and she comes with us when we fly, yes. she comes with us. Um, so she's totally involved. But um, so I will say like, I used to be an emergency room nurse for a few years um, and that changed my perspective quite a bit on life. Ah. Um, so not to be grim, but like, honestly, you just don't, you just don't know. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I could have taken it a couple, couple ways. I could have been like, YOLO, you only live once, spend all my money. Um, but I went the other way with it. I thought, you know what, how can I multiply my money and um, really retire early and just have time with family? And then mm -hmm. um, if we want, um, if it's something we're passionate about or maybe do you know, a little more real estate. But um, so, that, so that's where I went with it. It's, it's time freedom. So sure. um that's all that means is investing, investing for my time. Yeah. No. And again, right. Going back to what you gave earlier, you're looking to buy two decades of freedom. Yep. Like time Absolutely. freedom. And Absolutely. Uh, having achieved that, I can tell you it is more awesome than you can possibly imagine. You can do whatever that, you, you know, again, we're like you, right? We don't live ex extravagantly just because, you know, our bills are paid for, but um, it's the time freedom. Right. We, yeah. But the struggle was real, Michael. I was not always like this. I did not always heed my parents <laughs> advice. I mean, when you, like I graduated and became a nurse at 22 and that's decent money, you know, for yeah. a 22 year old. Um, I mean, I went down a path and had an Audi and whatever. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, there was some consumerism, you know, but I, it, I came back, I came on back and, um, I mean, I, I bought my house. We, we bought our house at 23 in California, wow. um, in 2011. And I will say we lucked out and thank goodness I wasn't too much on consumerism and, and, and entered the market because our house has almost doubled. Um, yeah. 2011 was a spectacular year <sighs> to buy. Yeah. 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 No. And that's, and again, that to just bring this all forward, that'll be part of your nest egg when you punch out in three years. 1000%. That's, that's going to be really nice when we go to move here. Um, and it can just, honestly, I think the moving to Tennessee, um, honestly, is just a way to fast track. Oh, for sure. No question. Yeah. Right. And you yeah. live, you, you, you reduce your monthly requirements, right? Cause it's paid, your house will likely be paid for free and clear. Yeah. Um, it's really, really cool. So, so at least as we wrap this up, any last minute advice for Californians or anybody in expensive areas thinking about out of state do's and don'ts? Uh, they obviously got to follow you on uh, investing for financial freedom. How else can they follow you? 
Um, so we do have a bigger pockets account. You can find my husband, Todd Rasmussen. He's really active. I also have an account, but I hardly ever go on there. <laughs> um, and then last, last minute advice. I mean, honestly have a foundation, right? So learn all about real estate investing. Um, know what you want out of a property. Are you looking for appreciation? Are you looking for cash flow? You have to know exactly what you want, what you're willing to spend. Um, know the area. It's really important, you know, the area and different neighborhoods. Um, and then have those teams. You have to have teams in place when you are um, investing from afar. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, Elise, thank you very much for doing this uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, or weekend or whatever we call this thing, Black Friday, I guess you can call it. Uh, and again, you win, you win for most picturesque backdrop. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right.